Good morning and welcome to our edition this week of our encouragement time with no title. Um, I intentionally did no title on today because I am sure there are many that avoid this topic and don't want to deal with it um, because it requires something of us and honestly I think Many just enjoy the, I won't even say it. Let's just go into it. <laughs> um, so today, yes, I'm waiting for a couple of you to get on. Hello, Janita. I love you. We're in here. I was just saying hi to your grandbaby, baby Hunter Lee in mommy's belly. Um, she's here listening with us too. Hi, Rebecca. Love you so much. So excited about what God is doing there in your church. Love you all so much. Okay. So today, we're going to jump in and get started. And we are going to start in the scripture, Luke 16, 10 through 11. And this is in the Passion Translation. Today, we're going to be talking about your finances and prosperity and good stewardship of your money. It really could be the answer to spiritual breakthrough. I'm serious. I'm not kidding. This scripture that I'm about to read, you say, well, what does a link to my money have to do with my spirituality? I'm going to read you the scripture right here. It has everything to do with your spiritual level, everything to do with it. So it's an important topic to talk about. It's actually the topic that Jesus, when he walked on this earth, talked about more than any other topic. So it's time for us to deal with our money. And I think too many times we wear power poverty almost as a badge as like this um it, i'm holier and i'm more humble because i'm impoverished no it's a bondage is what it is mm -hmm. it's a trap from the enemy and nowhere is it a blessing in the scripture it's actually only attached to cursing so if you've been wearing poverty or not having enough as this thing that makes you more spiritual or more humble than other people this is a wake-up call hear what the word of the lord has to say so let's read luke 16 10 through 11 and we're going to go through some super practical ways of how to eliminate debt and start walking in the prosperity that god has called you to walk into all right so we're going to read the scripture the one who manages the little he has been given with faithfulness and integrity will be promoted and trusted with greater responsibility. So first of all, when you are a good steward over the little bit that you've been given, then you can be increased and more and more and more. And I've definitely seen that even in my personal life. But those who cheat with the little or are not good stewards with the little they have been given will not be considered trustworthy to receive more. So here, this last portion right here. If you have not handled the riches of this world with integrity, so if you are not being a good steward with the, the riches of this world, money, if you are not being a good steward with money, why should you be, this isn't me, this is red letter, this is Jesus actually saying this. Why should you be trusted with the eternal treasures of the spiritual world? Seriously, tackling good stewardship. And I, you might be in a place where you're making enough to make your bills, but you're still not in a place of good stewardship. That's what I'm talking about. Or maybe you've just been a terrible steward of your money and you're in a crippling place. Right here in the word of God says, if you haven't handled money well, he will not trust you with spiritual things of the kingdom. So this could be a key to advancing in your spiritual life. Right through in your churches and in your homes. This is awesome to talk about our finances. So I want to talk to you about, well, I want to read one more scripture to you also. 
This is Matthew 25, which is talking about the parable of the talents, which is money. He, uh, this is talking about a parable where the king left and he entrusted money to his servants and he expected them to produce something from it. So we're going to go to this servant that was just given one talent. Now that wasn't a lot of money. You might say, I don't have much to work with. I have nothing to work with. God still expects us to be faithful with that little bit. And and he will then increase us. We have got to learn to be faithful. And there's too many times you just excuse away prosperity by saying, well, I don't even have enough. I can't even start. There's nothing I can even do about this. So here's what the word of God says about the one that was giving very little, wasn't given a tremendous amount, just very little. The servant who had been given the single coin came in and said, sir, I knew that you were hard to work for. You harvest where you don't plant and gather, gather crops where you haven't scattered speed, seed. I was frightened and went out and hid your money in the ground, held on to it so tightly, held that thing, buried that thing in the ground. Here is every single bit. Here is the coin that you gave me. The master of the servant told him. Ooh, now listen, again, this is not me saying this. This is the word of the Lord. This is what Jesus responded to the one that just returned simply what he was given. You are a lazy and good for nothing servant. You know, I har if you knew I harvested where I did not plant and gathered crops where I did not scatter seed, you could have at least put my money in a bank so I could have earned interest. So at the very least, what he's saying here is if you've been given money, you should at least at the minimal have a savings account that can build interest upon. So the basic bottom line is have a savings account. And I want to talk to you about eliminating debt, having a budget, and a savings account. A savings account is the single most important thing that you can do. And that's what the word of the Lord is saying here. A savings account will rescue you out of poverty. It will get you out of poverty and put you on top. And I can say this because I am living proof of it. We got out of poverty before our financial status even changed. We were making nothing. The church we worked for had to pay us some kind of salary. So they agreed that $20 was good a week. So we were being paid $20 a week. My husband was working as a school bus driver, which is nothing. It is minimal. They're not hauling in the dough. But in that time, we got out of debt and we got on top by these simple steps that you can take to live a life of prosperity. We started walking in prosperity even in that same time that we had hit such poverty level where it was just scraping by. And we did that first by starting a savings account. I know you might say, I don't even have enough to save. You don't have enough to not save. Mm -hmm. Now, let me rewind. The first priority is tithing, always, yeah. always tithing. Tithing opens the windows of heaven. Tithing gives you access. Tithing is simply returning to God what belongs to him. It's honoring him. It's saying, thank you for the gifts and talents you've given me that I can even earn money and earn a living. So tithing is the number one top thing. And listen, if you're a pastor or you're a minister, your time is not your tithe. I'm sorry, I don't see that anywhere in the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord says anything that is increased in your home is what you tithe off of. Yeah. Anything that's coming in, you tithe off of that. It is not, oh, I give enough. The church doesn't pay me enough. No, listen, if you're in that mentality, you're going to stay in the bondage of poverty. It is not what's supposed to happen. The word of God says that we are to tithe. The word tithe means 10% of your income. Whatever comes in, 10%. Not saying, oh, well, I'll just... I'll just consider it what they can't pay me in salary. My time is worth more than even tithe. No, listen, stop that and start tithing actual finances and money and watch yourself come out of that poverty. So I have a budget here. 
And there's a lot of things that you need to do today to walk in this prosperity, to walk in what God wants you to walk in. And a budget is one of them. If you do not have a budget and you're in a place of poverty, you're not going to be able to dig yourself out. There's just absolutely no way. And I, if you can see this, this is an example of a budget that I did with somebody. And I love it on a one-piece sheet of paper. This is every month. And this is based on a four-week month. I have some that have one line, and that's if you have two paychecks. But everything is laid out right in front of you, simple, so you can see. But if you can see the front of this, let me see if I can get this. The top is tithing, the number one thing. I don't even consider that my money. It's not mine. It doesn't belong to me. The tithe is holy. It belongs to the Lord, the Word of God says. So the tithe is the very first thing that comes out. And then savings. The very next thing is savings. So start saving. What we did is we started saving $5 a week. It was a simple thing that we started doing. We started saving just $5 a week into a savings account. You can do it however you want. The best way to do it is to put it in a separate bank account that's different than your main checking because it's too easy to just transfer that over. Make it difficult to get to that money. Make it an automatic. I did it as an automatic transfer, so I didn't even see that money. So I didn't even register. I didn't even know that it was going out. I mean, I knew it because I had set it up, but it wasn't something that I felt or really recognized that it was even going into a savings account. So a savings account. We heard that in Matthew 25. That's the least thing that you can do. And it will rescue you out of a pit because there are going to come times where you need new tires. The washing machine breaks and you're going to need that savings account or now you're becoming a slave to a credit card and you're putting that on a credit card and you're having to pay for the next 15 years of your life. And here's another point. Never make a minimum payment. Never, ever make a minimum payment on anything. Pay extra to help yourself dig out of that. But anyways, so back to tithing savings account. That savings account is going to rescue you so many times. I do two savings accounts. I do a savings account for that big stuff the tires, the washing machine, and I advanced to this place, but I started somewhere. Start somewhere. It's the word of the Lord. It has everything to do with your spiritual spirituality. Your poverty does not have to do with your spirituality. It, it's not making you more spiritual. It makes you more spiritual to handle your money good. So this savings account will rescue you. And then I have a second savings account. I have two savings accounts. One I call a functioning savings account account. And that's when you get invited to a birthday party. You need to get your hair done because it's so gray and you need Jamie to dye that gray out of your hair. And you're not knowing where that money's going to come from. But if you have that money set aside in that savings account, you're able to then have the, the money and you're not going onto a credit card and tapping into that. Credit cards will keep you in financial bondage and you can get out and you can be prosperous. I am telling you, we lived on nothing, but it looked like such prosperity to the world by doing simple little things like savings accounts, setting them up and putting that money aside. And it might require, if you're in a bad place where you don't have enough, it might require you shutting off that cable. Come on. Making that sacrifice in the immediate moment to get yourself to a place where the cable isn't a problem. Get yourself dug out of that trap. And honestly, it doesn't matter how much you make. You can make 40000 or you can make 100000 and you could still be in the same financial position. It's a sad thing because the more we make, the more we spend. But it's not the way it should be. Listen, I the more I free up in my finance, it doesn't mean, oh, I get to spend more money. No, I get to add more to my savings. That's what I get excited about. Oh, Jade, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's one of her. It's so funny. My son, Chad, he aces this financial stuff that I've taught. And he is so funny because anytime there's free money, it's not like, oh, let's go on a spending splurge. Oh, I can put that in my savings account. So, but... It is such a wise way, and I know she loves and appreciates it because they've never once yeah. had financial hardship, ever, because they are good stewards with yeah. their finances, and it gives you breakthrough spiritually, according to Luke 16. 
So the more you get freed up, the more you're able to put in your savings account and the more you'll be free from ever having to have a worry in the world. Proverbs 31 talks about she has no fear for the future. I have no fear for the future of what's going to happen because I've built a savings account and it doesn't just start somewhere building these savings accounts. So you might not even be at that place yet, but I encourage you at level one, Start at least $5 a week. No matter if you can afford it or not, stop buying that extra thing. Don't buy the Oreos at the grocery store. Put that money in a savings account. I mean, fast a meal. Save money somewhere so that you can put it in a savings account. Let's rewind a little bit before this. Live within your means. Don't be going out and getting a rent or a mortgage that's $1,100 a month. Uh, live in something that you can actually afford to live in. And when you become faithful in that little tiny bit, then God will be able to increase you. Then you'll be able to have savings accounts. You'll be able to first tithe. You'll have savings account. You'll have more than enough. God will in advance you and increase you when you are faithful with that little bit. Mm -hmm. So start, maybe you're in an apartment that's too high for your living. Mm -hmm. Look for something different. And you know what? If it's not the Taj Mahal, clean that thing the best that you can. Make it look the very best that you can. Your clothing, if you don't have the best of the best and the latest and greatest, listen, just clean what you have. Wash it. Press it. Make it look great. You can live well on nothing but we're too busy trying to keep up that we're burying ourselves in these debts so make a budget live within your means tithe and a savings account now debt elimination maybe you're already in a place where you've not been a good steward and you just didn't know because you weren't taught my people perish for lack of knowledge the word of god says but you're hearing today and you're like i want to do that so bad i need financial freedom i am so tired of ministry gifts living impoverished because i am telling you from personal experience you can live well even off of forty thousand dollars a year all of my children have bought houses at very young age they own their homes they bought them for like seventy thousand dollars they didn't buy two hundred thousand dollar houses they bought manageable houses that were less than what they would be paying for in rent. That's always what I encourage and the goal is, is that when you own a home, you're paying less than it would be for rent when you're being a good steward of your finances. So I love that they're not flushing their money down the toilet every week, every month in rent. They're building wealth. They're building equity in their finances because a lot of times you'll rent for five, 10 years. And if you had bought a house and paid less, you would have equity and something to show for it. So there's ways that you can live better with less money than people that make more. We've always lived better than people that make more money than us by being good stewards. So let's start eliminating some of this bondage that strangles us, that chokes us in our finances. And what I like to do is I put a, a star by any um, bill that's something that can go away. So if it's a doctor bill or it's a credit card bill or if it's some kind of um, line of credit bill, as I put a star by it because my goal is to make that disappear from my um, bill chart. If you see my personal bill chart, there's like four things on each week because I don't have any debt I don't have that bondage and I'm able to put a ridiculous amount of money in savings accounts every single week and I get so excited about the more I can put in savings because then when I have something that I want to sow towards or give towards I have more than enough I can give to every good work but it started with five dollars a week in a savings account and digging myself out so what you do in debt elimination is you take your smallest amount. Say you have a debt that's $150 and the payment on it is $25 a month. And you think, oh, it's just 20, but you can get rid of that debt and then you can take that $25 and apply it to the next amount. So when you free up that small amount, maybe you can, there's several ways you can get rid of that debt. Maybe you have something that you can sell. 
Maybe you can do a yard sale. Do something that will eliminate that smallest amount so that you start this snowball effect of being able to eliminate debt in your life. Do whatever you have to do to eliminate that smallest one. It is pretty easy to do something to um, eliminate the small one. So there's also car insurance, homeowner's insurance. That's something we're always shopping around. And that's one of the quickest, easiest ways to save a little chunk of money out of your payments. So find a different insurance company that's cheaper, that's less money, and go with that. And that instantly puts more into your budget. But when you eliminate that first small amount and you have another $25 a week, oh, we can increase our, we can now have um, extra money to spend in our budget. No, 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 no. You take that $25 and now you start adding extra to the payment that you're making on the next highest amount and you watch that one cycle out and get done. And now you've got $75. You can start paying $75 extra on your next payment until all of those ones go away. Meanwhile, you're saving money so you're not building that debt, incurring it over and over again. So there's things that you have to do simultaneously. And the word of the Lord actually in Matthew 25 called it being lazy being lazy. We can't be lazy in our finances. We have got to get serious about our finances and being good stewards of our finances. God takes your spending so seriously. You need to take your spending seriously. I know you think everything else is so much important. It's how much you pray, how much you're on your face. Jesus talked about money more than any other topic, and it says in Luke that it's a direct result of the spiritual things that you're going to be entrusted with. So if you want God to increase you spiritually and entrust you with more spiritually, then we have to be good stewards of the mammon, the money of this world. That's his word, red letter. That's not me saying it. So we've got to start eliminating debt and walking in the prosperity of the Lord and every single one of you can do it. My husband just preached on this on Sunday and I had so many other topics I wanted to share with you today. But when I woke up this morning, he was like, nope, I want you to stay on this topic. I want this hit until my people are free because he desires, he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his children. He does not take pleasure in the poverty of his children. It does not make him look good. We've got to get serious about being good stewards of our finances because God is serious about it. I know it's a topic that we don't like. We hide behind it. We hide behind poverty. We hide behind, well, I just don't have enough. I can't even do it. We got a message after Sunday's sermon from somebody, well, I don't have enough to do this. Yes, you do. You always have enough. Every time we have calls from people um, for help and assistance, I remember one time my husband had a call from somebody that wanted assistance and help, and he could hear his TV blaring in the background, and he was on his cell phone calling. I'm sorry. If you don't have enough, get rid of that. I mean, seriously, it can be a temporary season in your life. Get rid of the internet. Get rid of the cell phone. Get rid of the TV. Use that money and start paying it on those debts and get rid of it. Take half of it put it on debt and put the other half into savings. And then you're gonna get yourself so you have no fear of the future, but you must, must, must start saving so that you can never be stuck in that debt cycle again. If you only pay attention to debt elimination, you're not gonna be successful still. You have to also do savings because without savings, you're not preparing for the future. You're not preparing for tomorrow. The things that are just naturally normal. Your clothes are going to wear out unless you're like the Egyptians where their clothes and shoes did not wear out. And if you want to pray for that miracle of faith, that's fine. But I'd rather have a savings account that when I need something, I'm able to go to that rather than a credit card that's going to that's going to put interest on me and put me in bondage. Right. So at the same time as eliminating debt, make sure you're increasing your savings every chance that you get. Live off of less than what comes in. 
my husband and I did the math for this last year, and it's so exciting. We lived off of 50% of our income. You're hearing me right, 50%. That's so awesome. We were able to just to our church give 30%. That doesn't count the bishop and Brother Ted that we support. Every single week we send money to Brother Ted. Um, we love sewing. That's another part. Don't eliminate supernatural supernatural harvest in your life. When you get that savings, use some of it to sow seed. The word of God said he gives seed to the sower. So he will increase that. The more you sow, the more he will increase back to you. So don't forget to be a sower on top of all of that. I remember when we were in this position, we, I mean, we were below the standard poverty level. It was below, but we reduced our debt. We started a savings and we dug ourselves out and we lived good. Not fabulous, but we lived good. And I remember the first time we were able to give $500. I mean, it was so exciting. We had um, sold some stuff and um, so that we could give because that's what you do. He'll give seed to the sower. You might have stuff laying around your house that you've just been holding on to and not willing to let go of. Sell it. Get some seeds so that you can sow. So we did that because we wanted to sow. So we gave $500. It was our first big thing that we ever gave. And it was in the middle of this making nothing. I mean, we made nothing. And so we gave the seed and it was amazing. I am a stickler with the budget. I am in my bank account probably two to three times a week taking care of, reconciling. I don't wait monthly. Oh my goodness, that would like just cause me panic to wait monthly to uh, take care of my finances. I'm in it every single week. I don't miss anything. I'm on it. Well, after we um, did the giving the seed, I reconciled the bank thing and I found a missed deposit. How do you, how do you miss a deposit? It was a five week month that I had completely forgotten about the deposit. And so God put that back into our account. Immediately, it was returned to us. Even though it wasn't even out of our, we had sold stuff for that seed, God blessed us. And that is what he does. When you learn to be a sower in the middle of poverty, uh, we had a testimony on Sunday from a young couple and their testimony was we gave our way out of poverty. So give your way out of poverty. Give you cannot outgive God. You can never outgive God. So while doing a budget and saving, being a good steward of your finances, tithe and sow and give your way out of that poverty. It's not a good look on a child of the king. You're a child of the king and God has prosperity and increase for you, but he will not bring it until you are a good steward of the little bit that you've been entrusted to. So I'm just being obedient to the Lord today. Like I said, I had a lot of topics I could have shared today, but this one was just really, really resounding in my spirit and I couldn't shake it. So I wanted to come on and share. And I knew if I put the title, nobody would even sign on. So I left it empty and blank um, because it is a super important thing to talk about. Let's talk about our money. Let's get to being good stewards. And if you don't already have those savings accounts, start with one, add two as soon as you can, but get to saving. Start savings accounts and start debt elimination today. Think of that thing that you can sell. Maybe it's something extra you can do on the side. Maybe it's a side seasonal job. Go get a side seasonal job. I mean, there's time. My children, they don't work one job. Never. They've never worked one job. They work more than one job because they're not sitting around waiting for money to fall out of the sky. God's given us ability to be debt eliminators and to walk prosperous prosperous and we're able to do that when we work for it. So what are you going to do to eliminate that debt, that smallest debt right now? Let's work on that. Let's tackle it. Let's get it removed. Anything that can remove from your budget needs to be worked on. Yeah. Hear me. Anything that can be removed from your weekly, monthly budget needs to be worked on and dealt with. So tackle it. Even if it's a huge thing, work on it, tackle it. But what are you going to sell this week? What are you going to do extra? What do you do a side job? Do so, I know my, 
<laughs> my daughter, she's working uh, and they're doing really good. It's so funny. My kids love to work. She's doing really good. Her and her husband have great jobs and they're super successful, but they're out doing DoorDash because it makes extra cash and they're having fun doing it. So maybe you can do DoorDash. I know there's like Instacart stuff that you can shop for other people and you can earn money. Do something to eliminate that debt. Make it disappear and then celebrate that disappearing and not by going out to dinner with it and spending. Celebrate it by putting on the next debt. And if you've eliminated all the debt, then celebrate it to adding to your savings. Continue to increase that savings at any level of prosperity increase your savings account live off of less than what you're bringing in and you will never have fear for the future so I pray this has been helpful for you and um, that it's blessed you today I know God wants you prosperous so let's pray real quickly father I just pray over everyone watching this I pray that they will just get a burden to be great stewards, to be great examples of stewardship, blessing, and prosperity, no matter what they make. God, that you would just put it as such a burden on their heart to live prosperous, to live as good stewards of your finances. And God, right now, I pray that you'll supernaturally give ideas, witty creations, things that they can do to increase them as they are obedient and good stewards. God, we pray for increase. We pray for supernatural debt cancellation and elimination in their lives as they obey, as they're faithful with the little things. You will entrust with more and more and more. So God, we call forth finances right now. We call forth finances and everyone that sowed their harvest, God, we call for a harvest right now in the name of Jesus. We call money in from unknown places. We call money in from unexpected places. We call money in from the wealth of the wicked. We call money in from the north, south, east, and west. We call money into their accounts, into their hands, that they could be good stewards and they can be prosperous in all that they do. And we thank you for it, Jesus, in your precious name, amen. amen. I love you all so much. Thank you for joining today. Have a blessed and prosperous week and get to good stewardship right away. Don't delay. Start now. Amen.